So it was November of last year, and I remember Irvin had just gone to work, and laying in bed, um, something just told me, oh, go take a pregnancy test. So I'd go through the procedures, and then I look at the test, I'm like, oh my god. So we went to the doctors after it. That's when we confirmed that she was pregnant. Later on, we made a big announcement. Veterans Day, we invited the family over, hey, just have dinner. And then after my prayer, I announced it to the family. And we all say, hey. Hey. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh, yeah. Um, Mom, Dad, hey, Mom. Mom, Julie's pregnant. <laughs> we found out it was a boy. And yeah, real happy. We even decided, okay, it's going to be E and J. Um, and then something happened after the doctor kept looking at the ultrasound. Basically, he, he told us he pre-diagnosed uh, Ian with, um, with having a genetic disorder, very high risk of, of Down syndrome. When he was finally born, <laughs> crying, crying, and, and the nurse was like, wow, he has a good cry, he has strong lungs. I love it when I hear a good cry. He was crying, he was good. And it was about a, a couple hours later that the doctor told me, um, you know, I think you're, there's something else. There's, he has a condition now where his blood vessels, his veins are not properly flowing to, to his lungs. And that he had to fly out to San Diego immediately. Dr. Lamberti, the main surgeon, gave me a call and, and I put him on speaker. You know, his, his situation is very complicated, is what he said. And, uh, it's a very, you know, complicated heart defect and it needs to be done now, which makes this surgery an emergency. I asked Irvin one day, can you put the phone next to his ear? So at least let him know that I'm, I'm coming. I'm, I haven't forgotten about him. And all I said was, hi baby, hi son, I'm on my way. Don't leave me, I'm coming. I haven't forgotten about you. And all I could do was apologize that I'm, I wasn't there. Finally, came to the point where, after doing another surgery, he told me that the situation was was hopeless. The first time I held him, it felt right, you know. That was my first time holding my son, and that was the time I, I had to say goodbye. And I remember going to the bathroom. I get down on my knees and, and I pray. I'm lifting up my hands and saying, God, you know, take, take me instead. And again, I came back into the room and whispered to Ian, telling him, come back, come back, come back, Ian. He never came back. But the hardest part was coming back home with an empty stroller, all our baby stuff, blankets, pillows, and, and no Ian. This past Friday was Ian's first birthday. And there's so much, so much emotions that just run through, you know, my mind and everything. When we first found out we were pregnant, I was super excited. I was like, wow, is this really happening? I'm gonna, we're gonna have a family. I was really excited to, you know, teach him music. One of the first things I thought is, after I found out it was a boy, is, okay, what instrument he's gonna play? And then all of a sudden, you know, we give birth to Ian and he's just, he's really sick, you know, and he's taken away from us. When we were in San Diego, the 28 days felt like forever. And if there's one thing I remember doing a lot was, was waiting, waiting for God. Waiting for Ian to just come out of it. Waiting for the doctors to just give me the good news. I felt the rug got pulled up out from under me. Like, okay, God, are you toying with us? I mean, why did you give us all these things, give us high hopes, and then you took Ian away from us? I remember some nights we got into a couple arguments, and one night I just had it, I, I ran away. At one point, I remember screaming at the top of my, my lungs and, and swearing at God. You know why? And I didn't know 
how to get rid of that pain or that anger. It was actually because of Irvin that he kind of reminded me that, hey, um, Ian's somewhere better now, he's in heaven. Somebody from the worship team told me that the same thing happened to him. His pastor told him, I don't know why God took your son. All I know is he's with Jesus now. And, you know, make sure you get there. As I remember his birthday, I continue to thank God because where we're at right now, emotionally and spiritually, I don't know if we could have done it without him. Ian was only here for 28 days. And during that time, I felt that uh, a lot of people came um, to know God just by praying. We, I reconnected with so many friends, um, family members that I've never seen in so long. Um, they all showed up at the funeral. So if it was God's plan to bring all these old friends and family members together and share that love again, then I thought to myself, you know, why question God? It's not according to your own plan. It's God's plan and His own timing and what He wants for you, not the other way around. When I'm feeling down and I'm feeling angry, I have to remind myself it's, it's not about me. It's about God and He's going to just take all this pain and He's going to fill my heart with comfort and peace. With our faith in God, we know everything's going to be okay.